What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Geek Master, where we love all things geek more than Batman loves being paranoid. As usual, I'm your beautiful, sexy, bearded host, Cassius Samuels, and on today's show, I'm going to hit you guys with my review of the Flash Season 2 premiere titled The Man Who Saved Central City that aired on the CW October 6, 2015. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Starting off, I thought the beginning of the episode was pretty damn awesome. It showed the dynamic duo of Firestorm and Flash taking on Captain Cold and Heatwave, and I was impressed. I thought it was a really cool way to open up the show, and it immediately engaged my full attention as we saw this sequence play out and then fade out into a daydream of sorts, which I totally expected to happen. But what I really loved about the intro to this show was, I loved how the writers were able to use it to get the ball rolling with the story, while also keeping us in suspense about what happened at the end of season one, where of course we last saw Barry running up the side of the building and into a temporal vortex in an effort to stop Central City from being obliterated. But once the revelation came that Flash was not the one who actually saved the city and that it was indeed Firestorm, I felt a little cheated in a way even though I knew writers would do something along those lines in order to write Robbie and Mills character out of the show for now. I understand why they did it so don't get me wrong but I just felt it was kind of a cheap way to do it, which I will elaborate more on later. But as the show got rolling, we found out that we were six months beyond the events that took place in the season one finale, and I have to admit I was pretty ambivalent about that revelation as well. In one hand, I know it gave writers the leeway to kind of set up a new status quo and show Team Flash in total disarray. We saw Barry had now become a loner, Cisco and Caitlin had decided to go their separate ways, with Cisco going to work with Joe's Metahuman Task Force on the Central City Police Department, and Caitlin taking a job at Mercury Labs. Even Iris had become kind of a hard ass after Eddie's death. So in that regard, the six month jump was a positive plot device that allowed writers to set up a new dynamic, which was overshadowed with a really dark and ominous tone that I thought was pretty brilliant. But on the other hand, I think the six month jump was kind of lazy as well because there's a lot of stuff that could have happened in that six month period that seems like they just skipped over for convenience. Like, what have all the uh, escaped metahumans been up to from Flash's rogue gallery? With them all on the loose and the city in a state of rebuilding, you would think that there would be a huge spike in criminal activity, especially metahuman criminal activity, and that some of the fallout would kind of bleed into the first episode. But again, it seems like the writers just skipped over it. Not only that, what about Jay Garrick and Adam Smash? Why did it take them six months to finally show up? I may be nitpicking, but I am an analytical mind, and I like for things to be cohesive in the story and make sense, and in order to do that, I need writers to take a few minutes to sit down and explain shit and not just skip over it and leave us as fans to make up theories wondering what may or may not be accurate. But I digress. Overall, I do think the six month jump was useful and pretty instrumental in setting up the darker tone of the episode, which I felt was 100% appropriate, considering all of the revelations that we received. But as I said earlier, the revelation that Ronnie had to sacrifice himself was not a surprise to me in any way. And as I'm sure I'm not alone, I definitely don't think that Ronnie Raymond is dead, especially since he verified himself that we had not seen the last of him on his Twitter account after the episode aired last night. So, going off of that, I'm going to say that he either got transported to Earth 2 or even somewhere else in the multiverse altogether, or that he got sucked into the Firestorm Matrix. Considering that the multiverse will probably only be a major focus for the second season of The Flash, with possible reoccurring appearances in the future, I think the most plausible theory at this time is that he was sucked into the Firestorm Matrix because we know a ton of characters that have found themselves trapped in the Matrix against their own will. So that's when I'm rolling with the tune, any new information comes forward. I thought the show writers did a pretty good job on this episode of letting the supporting cast be more involved with the show's outcome as well. The only person I thought they could have used a little more screen time was Caitlyn, because we barely saw her and when we did see her have her scene with Barry about Ronnie, it seemed like the writers pretty much skated over the fact that Caitlyn had spent all of last season thinking Ronnie was dead, found out he was in fact alive, only to lose him again like 8 episodes later. That's a lot of trauma, and they made it seem like 6 months later everything was cool and she had moved on even though she irrationally blamed herself for Ronnie's demise. Another thing I thoroughly enjoyed was the tease of Cisco's powers, and even though I don't expect Cisco to become Vibe this season, I love seeing the writers set up the birth of Vibe in a way that will allow Cisco to still have a major impact on this season's outcome regardless. But, however, one of the things I didn't like about the episode was the Atom Smasher. 
I felt like he was not a very compelling character, and he came off as another Freak of the Week villain, which is something I was hoping that the show would veer away from as a format for the show this season. For a character with such a sizable background in the comics, there was basically no backstory for him at all, and I thought that was very lethargic writing. He just shows up, makes Flash his bitch for a minute, then gets trapped in the most obvious trap ever, then as he's dying reveals that he's an agent of Zoo. That was pretty whack. Also thought the Flash signal was whack, but hopefully, it was just for one episode and we won't have to be seeing that again this season. I thought the special effects were definitely upgraded and on point outside of Adam Smasher looking fake as hell when he increased his mass and size, but you can see the CW was really invested in making the budget go as far as they could, at least for the season opener. Overall, I will say that the show is a legitimate nightmare for anyone looking for logic in their time travel stories. I mean, just think about it. The Eddie paradox from last season that created the temporal vortex was basically averted by Firestorm going boom at the center of the singularity. How does that even make sense? That's why I kind of felt cheated with the way they handled the whole situation. I just don't understand why writers would want to skip over the implications of Eddie's death on the timeline going forward. We could get more of an explanation later on down the line, but right now, I think it's just a clusterfuck of confusion from an analytical perspective. But then again, I can understand if the writers just don't want to get caught up in the minutia of all the time travel nonsense, since time travel always convolutes every plot anytime it's used in the first place. I thought the video from Dawn at the end of the episode was very deep, and it gave me goosebumps to be honest. There were a lot of powerful moments in this episode, but I think that one kind of hit me the hardest because it showcased the completely unorthodox relationship between Thawne and Barry, and I thought it was a superlative display of storytelling genius to put a cherry on top from the story of last season. Things I wonder about going forward, though, are things like how will Henry fit in now that he's out of jail? I wonder how Harrison Wells is going to be reintroduced to the show, and how is he supposed to fit in at the new Star Labs? And if he's actually from Earth 2, how do you even connect those dots in the first place? I also wonder, of course, who Zoom could possibly be. Some theories say that he could possibly be Barry's dad from Earth 2, or maybe even Wally West from the future. But that's all crazy talk to me. I think it's a totally new character who will probably be a composite of various reverse flashes smushed into one. But only time will tell, and I cannot wait to see where it leads us next. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to a close. If you found any value in this podcast, you know the drill. Please drop a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Facebook at The Geek Master. I try to put out at least one video a week, so if you want to stay up to date with all things geek, you know what you need to do. I will see you gorgeous geeks and notorious nerds next time. I'm out of here, bitches. Peace.